everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen and another edition of What I Eat in a Day YouTuber Review. So I've been reading all of your comments and a lot of you guys have asked me to review a carnivore's diet. And there's a few of them, the few names that I've seen come up often, but I'm gonna work my way through and start with this guy. His name's Siv3 Rich. I don't know how to say his name, so I'm just gonna call him Godis, Godi. Goat man, I don't know. Cue the T Swift. That's all I know. Now I'm lying on the cold hard ground. <laughs> Second of all, I want you guys all to know how much I love you because it was like painful for me to watch these videos uh, for a lot of reasons, many of which I don't have time to like get into detail on during this video. Uh, but things like the fact that he thinks the earth is flat, that he seems like he's anti-Semitic, and also he has another video called Serial Killers Are the Real Heroes Organ Harvesting. And when asked if he's suggesting that we kill and eat people, his response was yes. <laughs> Yeah, and YouTube screened and pulled down my video. YouTube, we gotta do better at this. We gotta take this down. But anyway, I am here to talk food, not politics. So I wanna get into analyzing his diet. Before we get started, a big, big, big warning, especially to all of my vegan viewers, what you are about to see probably will offend you because quite honestly, it offends the out of me too. So let's do this. That's enough of that, I would say. Um, I just want to say that I'm trying really hard to be professional and kind with this review, but I'm struggling like immensely to watch this first scene. Basically what we're seeing is a hooded man uh, hunched over in a dark apartment shoving raw meat and butter into his face. Fine, fine. But let's talk about that liver that he's consuming right there. So don't get me wrong, liver is probably one of the most nutritious organs that you can eat. However, like most things, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing, like a really bad thing. And in the case of liver, we're talking about vitamin toxicity, vitamin A toxicity to be specific. And yes, that's a real thing. So one 3.5 ounce piece of beef liver contains about six times the recommended amount of vitamin A you should be getting per day. And vitamin A toxicity can lead to vision problems, bone pain, and risk of fractures. It also has more than your recommended cholesterol for the day. And while new research does not suggest that cholesterol is necessarily the cause of heart disease, I would still say that you wanna go easy on the portion sizes. And yes, totally fine in moderation, but in combination with everything else going on in this guy's diet, including that stick of butter he's consuming, I would say it's overkill. All right, let's get to his next meal. Right there on the ground. Tomorrow. There's chunks in it. There's chunks in it. So the massive jug of blood is like a lot for me right now. And I watch a lot of true crime. So you'd think I was down with all the creepy <laughs> but nope. Still one of them watching that. <clears throat> I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I would like, I'm longing for the, the raw vegans token green juice right now. But in any case, let's talk about blood. So eating coagulated blood is actually quite common in some places of the world. So I'm gonna try really hard not to yuck somebody's yum. However, generally it's mixed with salt um, and then either cut into cubes or it's mixed with other meats and stuffed into casings to make sausages. Like blood sausage, I've had it before. I don't love it, but like I don't hate it. Now I'm sure a lot of you can imagine that people who eat or drink blood claim that it's a rich source of heme iron and can help prevent anemia. Now I'm not gonna argue with that. Of course, blood is a great source of iron, but as you can see, and when you do, from all of the animal products this guy is eating in his day, uh, iron is really not a nutrient of concern for him. Is there such thing as too much iron? Yes, theoretically, definitely. And iron overload can cause things like arthritis, cancer, heart problems, liver problems, diabetes even. But generally we see this from an excess of iron supplements or if you have an absorption disorder. Could it happen from food? 
possibly, especially if this guy is, is prone to iron overload. However, the body really tightly regulates how much iron is absorbed based on how much or how little is given. The bigger concern that I have is around food safety. So the WHO, or the World Health Organization, have found a few cases of bird flu that they specifically linked to people who consumed raw blood-based dishes. So definitely not something that I would want to contract. Oh, oh God. <laughs> Guy's licking it off his mustache. <laughs> oh. That's a mess here. Okay, that's enough. I know, it's enough. We, we're all cringing here. Yeah, nothing like cracking into a sketchy bag of butter. Um, this is soured butter to be exact. So basically soured uh, cultured butter is made kind of like sour cream or yogurt um, by taking butter and of course souring it with some kind of bacterial culture. Um, sounds like something I would find at some kind of like experimental Michelin star restaurant served with some fancy ass brioche. So I'm down with the concept, but to just like eat chunks of it like that, um, is like really making my mouth water and not in like a good mouth watering way like when your mouth waters right before you're going to yak so that's happening that's fun right now also like for the love of the all that is holy can this somebody just get this guy a napkin it's getting like really really grotesque savage would be a better name for this guy it's i'm over this you also want to see your clothes right my enema I don't have an enema in my closet. Yeah, you do. What, the red thing? Or was it blue in the kitchen in the closet? What? Yeah, and you touched it and you said I touched it. Oh, the yeah, there is an enema there. Oh, it's not mine. It's from the previous owner. Like, what kind of conversation is, whose enema is this? I, like, what a classic response. It's not an my enema, I'm just holding it for a friend. What the f***? All right, I can take an oyster. We all love a good oyster, a buck -a shuck anyone. So I am so happy to be seeing that happening right now. I can actually like watch through this, this sequence. Um, and they're a great source of low fat protein to really balance out the like stick of butter that he just ate. So I'm gonna give him the stamp of approval for that. Okay, so obviously the oysters were just not cutting it. We got a little snack happening. Really? The good one, Doug. Yeah, it's still good. Mmm. No, he's like eating it like a burrito in the back of a cab. Like, that is one way to kill your Uber rating right there. But also, can we talk about how effortlessly he is chewing through that raw duck breast, that raw fat? Like, what the f Honestly, the thought of eating through that much raw fat reminds me of what it would be like to eat through like a cheap uh, foam sold flip flop. No. Also, food safety again. Does this guy just like pull out a raw piece of meat out of his backpack for a quick snack attack? He is asking for salmonella poisoning. All right, so we're back at home for another snack. Great in quality. Two cups of cottage cheese, it looks like. Journey. Mm hmm. I love cottage cheese, I really do. It's a great high protein snack, but I'm not sure I could consume two cups in one go all by itself. Also, are like spoons a no-go on this diet? Because like, does he have to be that savage? This is probably not the kind of guy you wanna to bring to like a fancy dinner party or your parents' house for a lot of reasons. Yeah, he also seems to surround himself with a lot of like-minded people like his friend Milk Jar. All I had was milk and blood and an egg and now the cottage cheese and honey. Yeah, that's all I had today. That's all. And then later I'm gonna have uh, the rest of my testicle. And like your own testicle? No, the rest. <laughs> no. Um, Glad the, you're not eating your own testicle. testicle, bud. 
I don't know which these two guys are worse, but clearly uh, birds of avian flu feather flock together is what I'm going to say about that. Um, but, you know, this guy's talking about his cottage cheese and his steak and his honey and his eggs and his bull testicle that he's got to come back to because apparently that's a delicacy that you got to savor. Like, what the f***? Is this guy on Survivor? Is he trying to win a prize? What kind of day of eating is this? I'm so full I'm gonna die. What? I'm so full I'm gonna die. Oh. Why is cottage cheese so filling? Because of the salt and the protein. <sighs> it's fat protein. No, you need no cheese, no cottage cheese, no milk. No cream, no. No, pa 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 pa. It is like the vacuum. It is like it's through. Sure. Sure. Hmm. I really do think that art is subjective, but considering there's a, a swastika on this person's forehead, I will openly say that this is clearly anti-Semitic and just plain ugly. Honestly, I was trying to have like an open heart and open mind with this guy and his diet and everything he stands for, but quite frankly, this is really offending me. Good stuff to end the day. I hate the sounds, the sounds. Yeah, I like it. Two more of these, that will be it for today. So first of all, they're like double yolk eggs. It's like he can't just have normal eggs. He needs the extra fat because he hasn't had enough of that today. But, but the weird thing is he just put the shells in his pocket. Like, it's so strange. This man is so strange in some of his dietary and eating behaviors. It's just bizarre to me. But now I wanna break it down and talk about the macros because there is a lot going on here. So for total calories, we're looking at about 2,300. Um, and in terms of the macros, it's about 67% fat, 7% carbs, and 26% protein. So not surprisingly, his macronutrient distribution is definitely a little out of whack and unbalanced. He's consuming dangerously high levels of saturated fats from foods like the really fatty duck breast, the egg yolks, um, and a ton of butter. Uh, he's consuming very low amounts of carbohydrates, less than 40 grams in a day. And his protein levels are within range. Um, and he's consuming fairly good sources from things like eggs, um, the, the liver, and the cottage cheese as well. But macros tell a very small part of the whole story. So let's talk about what's lacking in his diet. Honestly, a heck of a lot. If his diet looks like this every day, uh, this guy is likely missing out on a lot of vitamins and minerals. Sure, he's probably not deficient in iron or B vitamins, but without any fruits or vegetables or whole grains, he's probably missing out on a ton of important fiber and of course, a lot of the micronutrients as well. So let's talk about those. So first of all, I'd be particularly worried about a lot of the water soluble vitamins and antioxidants like vitamin C, because I'm not seeing any fruits and vegetables going in right here. Also, he's potentially at risk of vitamin A toxicity and copper toxicity if he's consuming a lot of organ meats like liver on the daily. I also wanna pull up his blood test results, which let me tell you, I think it's really weird that he posted online. But anyways, let's take a look. So based on these results, he's within range for the few markers he chose to test and disclose. However, there are other really important numbers I would like to see to get a better view or, or take on his overall health. Things like calcium, potassium, sodium, uh, magnesium, and of course, the most important, cholesterol. He mentioned in his blood test video that we would have to donate 50 euros in order to see his LDL cholesterol numbers, which I think is kind of like super sketchy as um, but I would also really like to see his urea nitrogen levels so that I could assess his kidney function, considering he's consuming so much animal protein. Also, we can only hope that this guy is adding some kind of multivitamin to his diet routine, but like with most YouTubers, we don't hear anything about that. Now let's discuss the elephant in the room. Is eating raw meat safe? Not really. 
So compared with raw fish, raw meat specifically has types of bacteria in it that can cause food poisoning, specifically things like E. coli. Now, even in places like Japan, which are known for serving up uh, like liver sashimi and other raw meat delicacies, the Japanese Ministry of Health, Labor and Welfare demanded that people stop serving up raw liver, raw beef liver, because of so many cases, deadly cases of food poisoning. Now, of course, there are ways to reduce your exposure and your risk of food poisoning. Things like safe handling practices, using really good quality meats, um, and also storage and refrigeration. However, there are a lot of moving parts before that food ends up on your plate. The other question I'm probably gonna get asked is, is raw meat more nutritious? No. I know raw carnivores will share sensationalized anecdotes about how much healthier it is to eat raw. However, there's no scientific evidence that there's any be benefits to a raw meat diet. What we do know is that the more processed a meat product is, the higher the risk of cardiovascular disease and certain cancers. However, highly processed foods are not the same thing as cooked foods. These are two different concepts. So let's talk more about the cooked versus uncooked thing here, because this guy seems to think that cooking ruins the nutritional properties of food. And I wanna unpack that a little bit. So when we cook meat, some of the enzymes are deactivated at a certain temperature. And raw food advocates claim that this can lead to enzyme deficiency. However, this does not actually make that much sense because our body has its own enzymes that we use to digest food. And we don't rely on the enzymes in food to digest it and do it for us. Scientists have chimed in on this and agree that there's no evidence to suggest that raw enzymes contribute to better health or that cooked enzymes have some kind of negative impact on our health. What I can say is that there are some nutrients that are depleted by cooking. Things like vitamin C or B vitamins can get leached into the water. And for that reason, we recommend fast cooking methods, things like steaming or stir frying to get the biggest nutrient bang for your buck. On the flip side, there are vegetables and nutrients that are actually enhanced by cooking. So things like carrots, uh, tomatoes, peppers, spinach, all of these have enhanced antioxidants when they're cooked versus when they're raw. When it comes specifically to raw meat, Harvard researchers actually found that cooked meat actually supplies more energy to the body than raw meat. So move along raw carnivores, move along. Should anybody actually be eating this much animal product? Well, research over the years has shown that increasing the amount of plant-based foods in your diet and reducing the amount of animal products in your diet can help reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and all-cause mortality. So in short, I would say, no. Now, next I wanna talk about digestion. Not to get any more graphic than we already have in this video, but I would not wanna be in the same house as this guy when he takes a dump. Cooking tends to make food a lot easier on our digestive system because it means it's easier to chew, which in turn makes it easier to digest, and that will cut back on gas and bloating. This guy also has legit no fiber in his diet, so I can only imagine how many magazines he probably goes through as bathroom reading material every single day. Finally, I wanna talk about this guy's philosophy. So in the past, we've reviewed other vegan YouTubers, What I Eat In A Days, um, and these YouTubers tend to be really aggressive in their own food philosophies and shame other people who don't follow along as hardcore as them. But what about people like Godis? Do we want to encourage other people to eat like this, especially with what we know about the environment? Eating this way would require you to eat a ton of meat every single day, which not only has health implications and is very expensive, but also can be super damaging to our environment. The point is going to an extreme on either end of the spectrum is devastating in its own way. Finding a more balanced approach to eating is a really important way to ensure that you're getting all the nutrients you need and also keeping mother nature healthy and happy. I also just wanna say that I really don't like this guy's activity on YouTube. He seems to have made a life out of taunting vegans by showing up at vegan events or restaurants to eat raw meat, and also is making a lot of videos about vegans talking about how they're malnourished. Like, nobody, no. We need vegans in this world to balance out people like your meat consumption. It is a huge problem, and you don't have to be a dick about it. Honestly, I'm over this guy and I'm so glad we're at the end of this video so I don't have to talk about him or watch his videos anymore. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and my What I Eat In A Day series. If you did, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below if you've made it this far watching what he has 
been eating. Um, I would love to know other YouTubers who you want me to review. Subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.